many of you know, but a lot of you probably don't know about what's happened here over the past few hours in the Texas House. But just to cut to the chase, um, just a few hours ago, the Local and Consent Calendars Committee met behind closed doors and set a Local and Consent Calendar for tomorrow. We suspended the rules on the floor uh, earlier today to allow them to do that, to set a Local and Consent Calendar for tomorrow. And when we received word of what bills had been set tomorrow, um, what all of us had suspected might happen actually happened. Many of our bills, um, I know there were three of mine, I know Representative Swanson, Representative Kane, Representative Shaheen, Representative Lang, and Representative Sanford had our bills removed, not just not set for the calendar tomorrow, but removed and referred to the General Calendars Committee. As all of us know, today, midnight tonight is the deadline for hearing, reading, uh, hearing House bills on second reading. And so referring bills to the General Calendar Committee is as good as calling them dead. And what's happened, um, and then I'll be quiet and let other members speak and we'll take questions, but really what this is about is this is um, another shot, another direct shot at the conservative members of this House who have this session, we've had our debates and our disagreements, we've had our arguments and our fights in public and in private, but for this caucus, for the Freedom Caucus, and for the conservative members of this House, it's always, always been about policy. 100% of the time, our disagreements, the times when members of this caucus have knocked bills off local and consent, when we have voted yes or no on the board, it has always been about policy. What's happened to us has been personal retribution. It's been personal attacks, personal retribution, petty personal politics. And this caucus has had enough of it. And so what we've decided to do over the course of the past few hours is to, as a caucus, along with our friend Representative Sanford, who's a conservative uh, warrior as well, who had a bill knocked off today but it's not officially a part of our caucus. We have signed um, a form that we're going to, in just a few minutes, deliver to leadership to essentially kill the entire local and consent bill uh, calendar tomorrow. And essentially what we're doing is exactly what they did to our bills. We're just asking them that they re-refer them to the calendars committee. If members of this body want to hit us personally, we, nine times out of ten, will rise above it and we'll be happy warriors and go on. But this has crossed a line that we cannot be silent about. And so that's our plan. We feel very strongly. We've had a number of other members from both parties, I might add, who have agreed with our position and who've, who've um, agreed to stand beside us tonight and tomorrow. And we look forward to exposing what's going on in this house when it comes to personal politics. And with that, I'll Let me just add be, that be quiet. this isn't the first time that this has happened to the conservative members of this legislative body. Our bills have been targeted for weeks. So yes, there's something here tonight with a local <laughs> consent and calendar, but this has been happening for over a month for conservative legislators that their bills have been targeted and they've only been targeted because of the voting record of those legislators. So in the current House of Representatives, if your voting record is too conservative, you will not be allowed to pass legislation. That's undemocratic, because what that means is if you're too conservative, you cannot represent your district. And we're all here to represent our district. And it is a disservice to all Texans whether conservative or not, to target members because of their voting records. Representative Leach said it well. We're here to debate issues and let the best ideas prevail. But to target members because of how they vote is an abomination to our democracy in the state of Texas. That's right. And the fact that we stand at the back mic to hold leadership accountable for the rules and they get frustrated and they start killing our legislation is absolutely absurd. The fact that 
uh, priority items and emergency items for Republicans are not being brought to the floor for us to fight for is absolutely disgusting, and we're tired of it, and we are going to hold leadership accountable for following the rules and stopping this uh, systematic killing of priority Republican conservative legislation, and that's part of what we're doing today. Any questions? If you, if you guys go forward with this plan, are you not just uh, assuming the tactics of your enemy, thereby becoming it's your enemy? It's not if. It's done. Well, okay, then the, the rest of my question still stands. Are you not then becoming your enemy by uh, employing their tactics? You know what? Sometimes you got to fight back. Sometimes you got to fight back. Every single one of us at this session has attempted in good faith on multiple occasions to negotiate, to work, in some instances to cut deals. And we've learned time and time again that when a bully punches you again and again and again, you can walk away, you can be kind, but sometimes you got to punch back. And it's not just conservative members that get targeted, it's conservative priorities that are targeted. That's right. Here it is the last day to do House bills and has a pro-life bill to save babies' lives been to the House floor for a vote? No. Has a strong Second Amendment bill been to the House floor for a vote? No. Has a strong property tax bill been to the House floor for a vote? No. Texas House leadership is failing Texans, and we're going to start fighting back tonight. What's a, you know, a concrete example for Joe Texan sitting at home, doesn't know how the House works? What's some state policy that's on the line tonight that's not going to pass because of the House leadership? To, tomorrow? Yeah, tonight. or you know, tomorrow with the, the local what what's, what's, like, what's like a stuff concrete stuff. bread and butter state policy that's not For the pass. House of Representatives, the bills that we filed, to that say that if a baby's heart is still beating, that you can't dismember it, that House bill hasn't moved. We have to hope that the Senate bills move and that pressure builds up at the end of session. They always dangle these pro-life bills out at us at the end of session and say, hey guys, behave and we'll let you get some pro-life bills out. So if you care about babies, you need to know that the leadership of the Texas House does not prioritize that issue. And, and let's be very clear about what bills um, of ours have been killed tomorrow and what bills we're essentially killing tomorrow well. These are consent bills. These are largely local bills. There's, there's no reasonable disagreement. There hasn't, these have sailed out of committee. And they've been sitting in many cases, in the instance of my bills, have been sitting in the local consent calendar for weeks, over 30 days. And which, which reveals to you what we all know is that it's personal. And so uh, what's happening tonight and what's happening tomorrow is unfortunate. But we feel as a caucus, as conservative members of this House, and along with several other, other members who aren't standing with us today, that this is the right action for us to take. All right, let's tomorrow. go. we got some votes. To take. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.